This illustration deals with work involving electrical hazards. In accordance with NFPA 70E 130.1, 1 through 4. Now, the purpose of change was a revision. The revision uh, was made and accepted by adding a reference uh, to 70E 110.4. Uh, which reflects the requirements of working with electrical hazards when an arc flash condition uh, could exist. And notice this uh, worker in the illustration is working under such condition. And notice the note. Employees interacting with electrical equipment and circuit components is outlined in 70E 110.2 A is an apple 2 on page 24. Now, interacting, as we stated, if you look at the definition of working on in Article 100 of 70E, you're interacting in some way with the equipment, switching the equipment, uh, switching a circuit, and so forth, uh, uh, maybe changing out a circuit breaker or other electrical component that had failed fun uh, function in some way, but you're interacting with the equipment. If not, you're not considered in the arc flash boundary if you're just passing through or taking an instrument reading or maybe a, a meter reading of some sort. Now, if we wanted to know and learn more uh, about these boundaries uh, that we see in the illustration, right here, then just go to the Annex C on page 60 and look at figure C as in car 1.2.3. And of course, the, the whole uh, Annex C deals with these approach boundaries. And as stated previously, uh, 70E 130.5E on page 26, you're crossing that arc flash boundary. You need your PPE on uh, to protect you for the particular job task. And in course, uh, the limited approach boundary that you see here in 130.4F, then you want to watch shock. And uh, so you want to make sure that you're protected from shock conditions. And standing in the limited approach boundary with the back of your head, you need your uh, sock hood, your shield, your glasses, and so forth. Now, the point of uh, exposed energized electrical conductor circuit parts is when you're actually working on that part, either with an insulated tool or maybe insulated gloves, insulated equivalent to or greater than the voltage. And then, of course, that restricted approach boundary is usually, as we stated previously, is extending the protective arm with a protective tool, insulated glove, and so forth, to make uh, contact with that uh, component for some reason, if you're using one of the gimmies, I call it, for uh, working energized, the exceptions, uh, exemptions that the code recognizes that we will be talking about a little bit later on in this presentation. But notice a qualified person is working within the limit approach boundaries so they follow the rules in 130.2, especially item 1, on page 24. And that's what this illustration is illustrating uh, to the user of NFPA 70E.